I want to talk to you about something kind of heavy right now. Something which you may encounter in your life and ministry. This is Dan Hawthorne. I welcome you to my channel. But I'm going to talk to you right now about ministry to someone who's suicidal. And ministry to a family which has experienced a suicide. Um, we talk about suicide an awful lot. When, when it happens, when Robin Williams passed away through suicide, he did visit a church apparently was seeking answers for his life. And we do need to discuss depression and suicide often enough to, because there are people who will be doing it many, many times. What a person doesn't need is any of our evangelical psychobabble or attempts for us to play amateur psychiatrist. What they need is above all the clear unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, the Lord who suffered and died to provide forgiveness of sins and eternal life. An unsaved suicidal person is someone who is often open to a Jesus in a way which he or she has never been open before. God gives each of us human beings a deep running desire to cling to life and someone who is seriously considering ending their life is really seeking for some kind of answers to his or her situation. We may not know what it is, but we need to first of all say, share Jesus in his salvation with that person. The gospel is the water of life to someone who's considering suicide. I know from many years ago, almost 50 years ago, but I still remember someone who was really desperate enough to take his or her life is more thirsty for the gospel than we may realize. Share the gospel with a person lovingly, lovingly as you can. And the suicidal person may themselves not need to go into much about uh, sin and being lost because they may often realize that they're hopelessly lost and cannot do anything by himself or herself to save himself or herself. And whatever the situation is, it, it may be made starkly clear to him or her, but they know that they need Jesus, perhaps, in a way which they never have before. Share Jesus as lovingly, as truthfully, as compassionately as you can. They may be open in a way which they've never been open before. Next thing, if a person is suicidal, Jesus often and personally interviews quite dramatically in that person's life. When that person cries out to him or her, I can't make any promises on the behalf of Jesus, the living Lord. But he often does that. And once Jesus takes hold of a person, in his or her darkest hour, that person can never, ever let him go. One of the things I've noticed that pastoral education and other training in personal ministry may never give much guidance on how to ministry to someone who's suicidal or someone who's a family who's lost someone through suicide. During my interview for ordination, I was asked about how I would conduct a funeral for someone who committed suicide and I came up with two things and that actually did come up I actually did as a pastor do a funeral for a family who's involved with my church where the father who never had um, attended church many years ago but committed suicide with this eight-year-old daughter who had been, had been attending my church hanging on his arm when he fired the gun into his head that ended his life and I make no judgment upon his faith of the person who com committed suicide. I spoke of someone who was there to offer hope and comfort for the living. For a family who's lost someone to suicide, there's comfort in the promise of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3-5 through 5. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our difficulties, so that we ourselves may be able to comfort others in difficulties with the same comfort we have received from God. 
There's no situation we can come into in this life, but that the grace and comfort of God is greater than the pain and agony that we're receiving. And for the living person also, there is this hope and promise of Jesus that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life, have it to the full. John chapter 10, verse 10. So Jesus can, through his salvation, give his people a life so abundant that they never consider suicide as an option or at all. And this is my personal witness to him that his salvation is that full and that free that he can fill us to the, to the point where salvation is entirely and wholly some, something that we considered in the past, but from which Jesus has saved me and saved many others. And yes, he did put me up to this. And where a person testifies that Jesus has saved them from suicidal thoughts and desires, it is a part of pastoral care, genuine faith in the grace of God, not to treat that person as someone who is currently depressed or suicidal. If someone has considered suicide in the past, but Jesus has saved them. Don't treat them as if they're still depressed or suicidal, but give praise and honor to God for the power of salvation that he came and he gave life, and gave it more abundantly to that person. I can't really speak to the many possible causes a suicide. I don't know offhand if there's any guidance to biblically rigorous guide, a complete guide to the pastoral care to the suicidal. Um, people get depressed, maybe organically based depressed. We need, may need to pray for their healing. I lost a friend some years ago who, when she was come trying to come off her antidepressant medicine, and was. Uh, encountered by encountered a family situation that she found overwhelming we need to keep on praying for the healing of such people of course and there are many cases where god has healed some people and we need to remember also many people consider suicide as their way out if they're living under protracted harassment or abuse or oppressive and overwhelming circumstances Pray for them also for deliverance from those circumstances, for Jesus to give them that abundant life. And one thing that we often don't talk about is that when someone comes into the occult, messes around with things which God has forbidden, they may be plagued and are often are plagued with suicidal thoughts and night terrors. Suicidal thoughts and night terrors were part of the thing, what was uh, happened to me in the days before I was considering suicide. But Jesus came to destroy those things also. The Son of God appeared to destroy the works of the devil. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Confession and complete renunciation of the occult and confession of Jesus Christ is what's net necessary in that point. And I offer these things as uh, part of uh, the way I think that it makes sense to minister to suicidal people. And I don't think we need to go too far into psychological explanations and remedies, except to tell people, please don't, please don't, please turn to God. Be a witness to the grace of God and Jesus Christ above all. To that person who's considering ending his or her life. And to each and every family member who's lost someone through suicide. It has been serious, been heavy. But I believe that we can see lives saved when we have a chance to speak the gospel, speak with people, pray with them. Pray for their comfort, pray for their healing, pray for their deliverance from occult bondage and from the power of the devil who may be giving and instigating those thoughts. I believe that that was happening to me. I think that pretty much uh, every time suicide's being uh, considered by someone who wants to get out of a circumstance, that's the devil's suggestion. So let's pray for people, minister to them, love them, speak the truth in love to them. And I think that Jesus can give us a life so abundant so that suicide 
is no longer an option for us. But living for him forever is all that we want. Thank you for your time. Hope this is ministered to you, giving you guidance.